As you can probably tell from the title, in this video, I'm gonna be a real, uh, glass hole. So as you can see, guys, we're back on the orange wall for Unpacked. We're all really happy about it, and we're really happy about the fact that this is a geek desk, and geek desk sent it to us. It's super cool, because it raises and lowers. It's really awesome, and uh, Jack is doing a Unpacked on it, actually, so keep an eye out for that. Thank you so much, geek desk. But anyways, the Google Glass Explore Edition has been around for a while now, actually since February 2013. Uh, you actually had to apply in order to buy it, and they were selectively selling it to developers and reviewers for 1,500 bucks, and it's still 1,500 bucks, actually. They just made it available to anyone in the US to buy it until their current stock runs out, but just last month, they had only a few days where it was available, and our CEO decided to snatch it up. So we finally get to play with it. Now, before we get into anything else, I've got to briefly mention the packaging for Glass. We take a lot of things out of their packaging here at NCIX, and this is some of the nicest packaging I have ever seen. I mean, I feel like Google took Apple's thing, where they have really nice packaging, and they just completely blew it out of the water. I mean, they have part-specific inserts in here for the parts that come with it, and they fit so snugly. I mean, this this is the this is the power cord right here, and I didn't even unwind it because it looks so beautiful, and it just fits perfectly in there. Just just look at it. Everything is just really clean and minimalistic design, and it really gives you the feeling that Google cares about this product, and they care about what you think about the product. Now, in the glass box itself, we have the base for the glasses, and there's a little insert for the back of it there and for the nose pads. Under that, we have the USB slash power cord and the power adapter, as well as some user manuals with some very useful information, like use caution if you're wearing glass and operating a jackhammer at the same time. That's very... That's critical info. And it also comes with some extra nose pads. Now this model came with the mono earbud, which has a design very similar to Apple's newer earbuds and an adjustable loop so it fits perfectly to your size of head slash ear. We also got these stereo earbuds, which come with various other color caps to replace the standard white ones. Very nice looking. Now our CEO actually has regular glasses as well, so he decided to get the frames that come with Google Glass. And those come in a hard case with a microfiber covering, and those also come with a tiny torque screw that will allow you to switch them out with the standard glass frames. To do so, you loosen one screw that's right there. It's attached, so it's not gonna fall out, even if you keep loosening it all the way. I had some difficulty switching the glasses with the standard frame, but maybe that's just because I was scared of breaking things and everything so tiny, and it's our CEOs, and I didn't wanna screw it up, but it's nice that it's just that one screw, so that's cool. And just like other frames, you can take these to your optometrist and they'll fit in prescription lenses. Google has partnered with various fashion brands to offer stylish frames of your choosing. So the device itself is made up of a 640 by 360 pixel prism mirror display, a five megapixel camera capable of shooting 720p video. There's a camera button on top near the front here. The power button is on the inside, near the back, well, near the middle, I suppose. A uh, touch-sensitive pad on the side for navigating the device. And a button at the rear, reading glass that is not actually a button at all. It's the bone conduction speaker. I thought it was a button, I was very confused. You can, you can click it, so I don't know why they would make it possible for you to click a thing that's not a button, but anyways, that's, that's weird. Inside the device is an 802.11bg Wi-Fi antenna, Bluetooth. 16 gigabytes of memory, although Google is straight up tells you that only 12 gigabytes is usable, pretty much. And a battery that Google claims will last all day with typical use. Now, I was able to get a couple directions, send some Hangouts messages, take a couple videos, each about two minutes long, all in about one day, so that claim holds up. Now, the companion app to Glass is called My Glass, and it lets you manage the device, favorite contacts, so you can more easily access them from the actual glass itself. You can add extra applications called glassware, uh, connect to Wi-Fi, and even screencast the glass display to your phone. So that's what we're working with here, but what is it actually like to use glass? As I'm sure you've heard on the internet before, it sits on your face just like glasses, and it's designed to be just in the top right corner of your vision, almost out of your field of view, just at the very top. Uh, the home screen is simply the time and a prompt to say, OK, glass. And from that screen, without adding any extra applications, glassware, you can take a picture, record a video, get directions somewhere, send a text message, send a Hangouts message, make a phone call, make a video call with Hangouts, 
and you can also Google search things. To use Glass as a Bluetooth headset for your phone, you actually have to go into the app and pin contacts. Glass automatically displays a number of contacts when you put it on for the first time that it thinks you message the most, probably linked to your Gmail or your Google account. So I had to go and add some people manually in order to be able to send them a text or a phone call if I don't use my Google account to contact them. As you add more glassware, the number of options you can choose increases. I added Evernote, Facebook, and Twitter, and options appeared in the list of things I could do for take a note, post an update, and so on. And when you do use the voice control features, it's all very snappy. You can say, okay, Glass, make a video call. Uh oh, oh gosh, don't, don't, don't record a video. Okay, this is me actually accidentally taking a video. Okay, Glass, make a call to Jack. Hey! <laughs> He hung up on me. Okay, Glass, make a call to Jack. Yeah. Sup, Jack? Not much. What's going on, Glasshole? What's going on is that I have uh, Google Glass and you don't, so screw you. So let's talk about the camera on Google Glass. You press once on the button on top to take a picture. You can hold the button down to take a video. Uh, the device will record for 10 seconds and then stop unless you press the button again or tap the touchpad. And of course you can also say from the home screen, OK Glass, take a picture, or record a video. Now there's also the wink detection feature, which is still experimental, it says right in the device, and that detects when you wink and it takes a picture, like this. I don't know if you heard that, but it just took a picture. Now this is where we get into the moral and ethical issues surrounding glass and personal privacy. I can totally understand why someone would find it uncomfortable to be around someone else wearing glass, especially if they're a stranger. I mean, all you need to do is do a subtle wink and you've taken a picture, like I just showed. Now granted, the glass app kind of makes you do an exaggerated wink when you calibrate it. It shows you a video of a girl winking and I did it really fast and it was like, do it slow like this. That's what she said. And we haven't reported on this a lot because we didn't really want to start flame wars in the comments, but people wearing Google Glass have been mugged physically attacked, they've had it ripped off their face and thrown on the ground, because A, people don't want a camera being pointed in their face, and B, Google Glass is 1500 bucks. It's kind of like walking around with a sign on your face that says, I've got money to blow. There's actually been a lot of tension in San Francisco and San Jose, California, between Google and local residents whose rent has been spiking because Google's bringing in highly paid employees and their landlords are like, hey, these guys are, are paid a lot, let's up the rent, and everyone else is like, come on! And that anti-Google sentiment has kind of translated to a general anti-tech company sentiment in Silicon Valley. Remember that we are the 99% thing, the Occupy Wall Street and all that? It kind of died down, but now people are walking around with thousand dollar doohickeys on their face. And I can understand how people who aren't getting paid a lot might be a little annoyed. Now Linus and Wheels and I were actually having a very interesting conversation about the future of Google Glass. Linus thinks it's gonna be a thing, everyone's gonna have one. It'll be the new cell phones. Because when cell phones came out, everybody thought you were a jerk if you had one. You're walking around talking on your magic box like you're some sort of superstar. What an idiot that guy is. I'll stick with my carrier pigeon, thank you very much. Of course, now you're a Luddite if you don't own one. But I'm not so sure. I mean, there's something about having a physical screen physical device on your face, even if it's not right in front of your eyes, it's kind of a barrier to social interaction, whether it's turned on or not. Now don't get me wrong, I loved using glass. While I was, while I had it with me, I was fun to be able to do a ton of things with my voice, hands-free, and have information right there without looking at my phone. In fact, when Google Glass came out, I was super excited. I was like, that's so cool, I'm gonna get it. But when I did interact with people while wearing it, it was kind of weird. People kept looking at glass, and it really seemed like a barrier to conversation. I mean, if you get a text, and you look at your phone, it's like, oh, just a second, I need to take this. Okay, it's done. And you deal with it, and you put it away. But with this, it's always on your face. Yeah, you could take it off and put it back on, depending on the situation, but doesn't that kind of defeat the purpose of glass, to have a heads-up display? I mean, what if you have prescription frames on here? You can't take that off. You have to, they're your glasses. You have to have them on. I guess what I'm saying is, I know it would be cool to use this all the time and have the information right there, a heads-up display, but do we want that? Do we want to be in a state where we're talking to someone and you get a message and you're all of a sudden looking up and you're like, just like I'm dealing with this, and the guy you're talking to is like, okay, I guess you're not listening now. Okay, that's cool. So what keys, you hate wearables? No, actually, and that's probably not what you sound like, so I'm sorry. I think smartwatches 
are going to be the future. That's this, this, this is the bet I'm making. I'm super stoked for Android Wear devices to come out. The Moto 360 is looking real pretty. That's a wearable that's easily accessible right there, and you can use voice commands, but it isn't on your face. I do think glass will be used for specific scenarios. Doctors are already using it to get real-time info on patients while they're operating, and it could be used in a slew of other professional applications. But I just don't think the average consumer is gonna spring for this. I mean, maybe I'm way off. The Explorer Edition sold for 1,500 bucks, but recently it's come out that the parts for glass only total around 150 bucks. There was another estimate actually that was only 80 bucks, but I think it's 150 is more accurate. So if this thing is 500 or 300 or 100 bucks, maybe we'll see widespread adoption. Maybe everybody will have one, but I don't know if I want that. The eyes are the windows to the soul. Glass puts another window in front of a window. Now you got double pane windows to your soul. I just want some soul on soul contact. Is that too much to ask? Guys, let me know in the comments, what would it take for you to buy a Google Glass? Are you betting on heads up displays or smart watches or bionic exoskeletons? Let's talk. All right, well, that's the most rambling unpacked we've ever done, most likely. If you stuck through to the end, well done, soldier. Like the video or dislike it, whatever floats your boat, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX.